Between 1800 and 1850, yellow fever became a regular visitor in the port cities of the southern United States. 15 epidemics in Savannah, 21 in Charleston, 33 in New Orleans. When yellow fever visited Philadelphia in 1793, Dublin-born publisher Matthew Carey writes, Many never walked on the side path, but went into the middle of the street to avoid being infected and passing by houses wherein people had died. Acquaintances and friends avoided each other in the streets and only signified their regard by a cold nod. The old custom of shaking hands fell into such general disuse that many were affronted at even the offer of a handshake. Thanks in part to early malaria investigators, understanding about the origins and transmission of yellow fever began to surface in the 19th century. In 1807, Baltimore physician John Crawford theorized a strong link between mosquitoes and yellow fever. Picking up on Crawford's original work, in 1881, Carlos Finlay, a Cuban physician of Anglo-French descent, noted that hemorrhaging red blood globules in yellow fever victims were unbroken upon discharge. Noting similarities akin to smallpox and vaccination in general, Finlay hypothesized that yellow fever might be passed from victim to victim via bloodborne transmission. If blood to blood transmission was truly the culprit, he surmised, then the mosquito made for an obvious prime suspect. Unlike Ross, however, Finlay failed to design an airtight experiment that might convince the scientific community that a similar connection existed between the 80s Egypti mosquito and yellow fever. Over the next seven years, Finlay conducted over a hundred experiments involving yellow fever and mosquito transmission. Only his medical colleagues remained unconvinced. Meanwhile, in 1897, Italian investigator Giuseppe Sanarelli announced to the world that he had identified a bacillus in yellow fever patients which appeared to be the causal agent of the disease. History, however, would eventually prove that Sanarelli was mistaken. The yellow fever issue came to a head after heavy losses to the disease during the Spanish-American War of 1898. Combat-related losses during the five-month conflict claimed 9,300 lives, while losses to yellow fever exceeded 53,000. As a result, George Sternberg, known as the father of American bacteriology, formed the Army Yellow Fever Commission in 1900 with the hope of ending the scientific debate on the cause and spread of yellow fever. Sternberg himself had been deeply involved in the fight against the disease since 1879, when he signed on as chief microscopist of the National Board of Health's Yellow Fever Commission. Prior to the formation of the Army Yellow Fever Commission, Sternberg had disproved a number of popular theories regarding the microbe responsible for yellow fever. Yet like the rest of the scientific community, final isolation of the organism remained an elusive mystery. Isolating the yellow fever germ was one unanswered question, but of even greater importance was the question of how the disease transmitted from one patient to the next. Many scientists believed in the fomites theory of transmission, which maintained that the disease could be transmitted by inanimate objects such as clothing or blankets. Sternberg himself believed that the fomites theory was correct. Henry Ross Carter disagreed. While a quarantine officer with the U.S. Marine Hospital Service, Carter observed that regardless of contact with infected persons or clothing, approximately two weeks elapsed between the first and second outbreaks of yellow fever in his quarantine camps. His study of a yellow fever epidemic in Orwood in Taylor, Mississippi in 1898 confirmed his previous observations. A period of 9 to 14 days separated the first series of cases from the second. The yellow fever germ required, as Carter called it, an extrinsic incubation period before it could be transmitted. Carter did not explain how or why this occurred, but his work suggested an intermediate host. Sternberg appointed Walter Reed of Johns Hopkins University and James Carroll of the U.S. Army Medical Corps to head up the Army's commission. 
Ross's discovery of the Anopheles mosquito's role in malaria transmission led the commission to conduct trials on Finlay's hypothesis that yellow fever was born by the same vector. Since at the time scientists believed that no animals were known to suffer from yellow fever, the four-man Havana-based research team began to use each other as experimental subjects. Jesse Lazier allowed Aedes aegypti mosquitoes raised by Finlay to bite patients suffering from yellow fever, then let the same mosquitoes feed on his arm. Lazier remained disease-free, however Carroll repeated the experiment on himself and fell ill within four days. Despite the severity of his illness, Carroll's sacrifice was begrudgingly discounted by the other members of the commission since Carroll could have contracted the disease anywhere in the greater Havana area. Finally, Private William Dean of the 7th Cavalry volunteered to be bitten by the same mosquito as Carroll. When he went down with a mild case of the disease, the commission now had its first clear proof that the 80s Aegypti mosquito played a role in yellow fever transmission. As Carroll and Dean recovered, Lazier came down with yellow fever. How he became infected remains a mystery. Some claim that Lazier applied infected mosquitoes to his own arm and fell sick, but others, including Lazier himself, said that he was accidentally bitten while tending to patients in a yellow fever ward. It is possible that Lazier reported his case as accidental in order for his family to inherit his life insurance benefits, since a self-experimentation suicide might nullify their claim. Lazier died of the disease at Columbia Barracks Hospital, September 25, 1900, after just seven days of illness. In August, six months after the Camp Lazier experiments, Carroll returned to Cuba to conduct further research at Havana's Las Animas Hospital. He produced yellow fever in a volunteer he had injected with infected blood that he had first passed through a Birkfeld filter. The mystery as to why no one had been able to identify the bug responsible for yellow fever was because the bug was filterable or ultramicroscopic. The bug, Carroll discovered, was a virus. Continuing the work of Carroll, Dr. Juan Guterres conducted further experiments at the Los Animas Hospital. Guterres hoped that his mosquitoes would cause only mild cases of yellow fever in order to demonstrate that lifetime immunity could be safely produced in a controlled environment. His experiments, however, backfired horribly. Several volunteers developed severe cases of yellow fever and died, including Clara Moss, the only female volunteer in the yellow fever experiments. Her death on August 24, 1901, created a public outcry that ended human experimentation in yellow fever research.